Jason Kaffink, and I'm here with Justin Swan from Webstone Company in Western Mass. And Justin, if you want to just give a little intro about uh, who you are, what you do, and what Webstone does. Sure. My name is Justin Swan, as she said. I am a design engineer at Webstone Company, Inc. And I am responsible for designing of the valves um, heavily into SolidWorks and in CAD related. And uh, we design plumbing valves for the heating market. So designing in SolidWorks, when you think about design, as you've already kind of said now, you've changed how you think about, about modeling. Correct. Um, can you describe a little bit about the process you go through when you are designing? Sure. Like I said, um, what we can actually do is I will pull apart here. Um, for anyone familiar with SolidWorks, you can actually grab the bar here and move it up into the tree. And what I was trying to explain earlier is if you think about if you were machining the part. Um, so a couple of basic shapes here and you end up with a blank forging. That's what the forging would look like if you were to have this part made. So unlike a two-dimensional where it's just this is the drawing, here you can actually move it down and see how you're going to, you know, make your part. Um, so we go here, whereas you can start to see now this is more of the forging kind of a, as a blank. This would be the absolute forging coming out of a, of a mold. Mm -hmm. And what you do is you start cutting. Here you can see the chamfers are being put on. Again, just, as, just like in a machining process. Um, the, th the threaded areas start going in. Um, nothing threaded yet. Another one over there. I'll open up a little bit more. Here you can see where this is where it would be drilled down. And then the final is uh, getting all the threads in there. Can you describe a little bit about why you're actually doing that thread work there? SolidWorks does offer um, a much easier way of putting in what I call phantom threads, which is great for the person who is just trying to show this is where threads would go. Mm -hmm. In our case, we make a lot of brass products. Brass is highly expensive right now. And our manufacturers, as good as they are, we want to make sure that we are paying for just the material we are using. Mm -hmm. SolidWorks allows us to pull down a, uh, I'll call it a, a material sheet, where we actually put in the type of brass we're looking for. It has a, you know, a certain density. And by cutting the threads, we are physically removing the material out of the part. We know exactly how heavy this part is going to be. Mm -hmm. Now, that's good for not only manufacturing, because we know what our scrap is going to be, how much the part's going to weigh. But when we start putting stuff in boxes and then it goes into containers, we know how much the pallets are going to weigh. Well. So if we have, say, a container product coming in, it can't weigh over a certain amount, we know exactly how much, how much product we can put in a container to get the absolute max, you know, bang for your money. Mm. What would you say, you know, on a, just a rough number, you guys have saved um, by doing it this way versus just kind of taking the wild guess? Well, thousands. Really? I mean, you really can't put a number. I mean, brass, much like copper, fluctuates. Mm -hmm. So once it gets to the point where it's as much as gold, uh, you know, anything that you can save is is added value. I mean, that's why we can keep prices competitive and, mm -hmm. you know. That's great. Um, so do you have any projects that you're working on now um, that you may not have been able to do in another CAD software that you can only do in SolidWorks? The, this is a, what we call the hydrocore line. This is highly complicated. You, yes, you can do it in a two-dimensional, you know, world and have lots of drawings upon drawings. But you really can't see if there's going to be interferences very well, clearance problems, you know, so on and so forth. We can actually take the model and we have it so that you can actually, you know, open the model. You know, what does that do? Well, you can see it opens the ball, you know, it, the, the whole model is actually functional. Mm -hmm. So you could bring this into, say, the simulator, run a liquid through it, and find out what's it going to do. Is it going to, you know, put cavitations? Um, People, like when we go to trade shows, we'll actually grab a model and they like to play with it. Mm -hmm. You know, people want to play with something that they don't, we don't necessarily make yet. Well, now we can give them this, open it up in e-drawings, and they're sitting there moving the valves, think it's the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. You know, maybe they don't like the fact that they think the handle's going to be too high. You know, they look at it upon this view and, oh, that sticks up too high. 
Well, it allows us now to, okay, well, we'll make that change, we'll, we'll do it live. So you can actually see the change being made. Right. You don't have, there's not that downtime where it's gotta go back to the engineers to do this, to do that. It's, it's you're making the changes right in, right on the model. Thank you.